The face-off or stare-down in MMA is often one of the most intense moments before an actual bout. You can often cut the tension in the air, it's so thick. It's the kind of thing that makes Joe Rogan make weird faces as he watches in awe. But sometimes, as we've pointed out before on our previous list, these stare-downs can turn goofy fast. Sometimes the intensity just lends itself to humor, oh, where's the way? Whoa, wait, and other times people just do outright bizarre things. And since you loved the first 10 so much, we've decided to count down another batch of them for you. Just like the last one, these are out-of-the-cage face-offs. Let's get silly. Hey, before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to turn on notifications. That way you never miss an upload. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 more ridiculously hilarious pre-fight stare downs. Number 10, Ian McCall's Tasty Beverage. You won't find many fighters saying their favorite part of the job is cutting weight. In fact, it seems to be the absolute worst aspect of the sport. The lead-up to the weigh-in can be grueling. And so, as you can imagine, fighters are a bit irritable. So Ian McCall decided to take advantage of that. John Lineker was having trouble making flyweight, not just before his fight with Uncle Creepy at UFC 183, but in fact, three times previous. At this particular weigh-in, mind you, this was back when they were live and not just ceremonial, Hands of Stone missed the mark by just a half pound. And so, as per the commission's rules in Nevada at the time, he would have an hour to see if he couldn't get the extra weight off. Not a fun thing to do after you've already struggled and couldn't quite make it. It's her Ian McCall. He was second to the scales, he knew his opponent had missed weight, and he knew the next hour wasn't going to be fun. So after making the flyweight limit, Creepy decided to take a long hit of that sweet, sweet electrolyte-filled box of goodness from his trainer while staring directly over at the man who was going to be denied such refreshment for another hour still. It's cruel as hell, but also a hilarious way to get at his weight-struggling opponent. Like that scene in Dick Tracy where he's drinking the water and Dustin Hoffman's dying for a sip. The two would end up fighting at a catch weight, and Lineker would get the last laugh, winning via unanimous decision. Number 9. Thug Rose's Prayer one of the truly stellar aspects of Ioana Jacek's game is her intimidation campaigns before fights. She's just scary. She has that fantastic way of just being absolutely brutal in this quiet tone only picked up on embedded episodes where she's just absolutely running her opponent down at the presser or a weigh-in. Her stare-downs are also notoriously intense, and they can sometimes lead to hilarious results. For instance, a pair of stare-downs prior to her final strawweight title defense at UFC 217 against Rose Namajunas. At media day, Ioana Champion was extra aggressive, kissing her fist and putting it all up in Namajunas' grill. Super cool move. Rose's deadpan stare was noted by a lot of fans, and she appeared to be saying something back to Joanna the whole time. A very similar stare down would play out at weigh-ins. The champ doing her intimidation thing, Rose staring back and saying something quietly. It was an interesting scene, and the always curious Joe Rogan had to know what it was Nama Yunus was saying back to Joanna. Her reply was unexpected. You keep talking her, what are you saying to her? I'm just saying the Lord's Prayer. Joe's face is priceless. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with praying. It's just that in the context of the moment, it makes this all a bit more ridiculous. Like Ioana was some evil spirit being compelled back to the Shadow Realm. The what realm? You know, the Shadow Realm. The big, purpley, cloudy place that you go to when something really bad happens to you. Interestingly enough, Rose would send her there three minutes into the first round. The power of a big-ass left hand compels you. Some bonus fun here and a great way to kill the tension. When Jessica Andrade took on Rose at UFC 237, she offered her a rose right before the stare down, and it was just the friendliest thing ever. I wish more fighters would offer objects to each other that are their names. Give BJ Penn a pen, Forrest Griffin a tree, Dan Hooker a boat. You know, the ones they use for fishing in Ireland? A hooker. Number 8. Mike Perry, Mike Perry's some more. The cartoon character come to life that is Mike Perry topped our original list with the classic Thought You Had a Friend Boy, and while he's not getting top billing this time, he still managed to bring the hilarity in a media day stare down prior to UFC on Fox 28 when Florida Man took on Santiago Ponzinibbio. He kicks things off with a banger of a diss. Been playing Simon Says with them lights at the gym. What you think that's gonna do for you? Mike referring to there the reflex enhancing walls of flashing lights gyms sometimes have. Next, Mike moves on to Santiago's size You're very big, boy. and reassures him things will be alright in the weirdest way possible. It's okay, man. You'll be alright. You play the guitar. You play the guitar. Classic Perry so far. Throwing a good scream. Can't have one of his stare downs without that. Ah! Ah! Now here's where things just get all kinds of silly. Out of seemingly nowhere, Ponzinibbio pulls a karate kid into a Hadouken. What really makes this for me is that Mike has turned his back and is not looking at Santiago, but somehow knows that this silliness is happening behind him enough to give his own weird Bruce Lee yell and then threat. What? Karate kid, boy. I love it. I loved every second of this. The weigh-ins didn't disappoint either. Perry was apparently really feeling that generic weigh-in music as he danced waiting for his opponent to take the scale, and then a seemingly normal pre-fight stare-down turned Mike Perry when he started sniffing his opponent to what end I don't know. It's Mike Perry, there's really no reason to even find an explanation. <laughs> Number 7. Conor McGregor Strikes a Pose 
For as much of a jokester as Conor McGregor can be, generally speaking, his stare-downs aren't particularly hilarious. They can be ridiculous, of course. Conor's intensity is often cranked up 30 notches higher than anybody else in the entire arena. But one time when Conor was most definitely trying to get the yuck yucks out of us, was at the face-off following the press conference for UFC 197, where he was meant to fight Rafael Dos Anjos. Of course, that bout never happened. That event would, in fact, change to an entirely different card, and Conor would fight Nate Diaz at UFC 196. But in this moment, everything is a go, and Conor is in his press conference prime. Fans immediately made note of his shirt, which is absolutely ridiculous. A $1,250 Versace silk floral, one strikingly similar to the shirt worn by the drug kingpin known as El Chapo, in a now infamous picture he took with actor Sean Penn, no relation to BJ, who was there interviewing him for Rolling Stone magazine, a meeting that would nearly see the drug lord caught by authorities. With the image having gone viral, Conor decided to recreate the pose during his face-off with RDA, who was not willing to play the part of Spicoli. It's unclear why Conor wanted to make the association with the picture, as it was seen as a massive mistake on the part of El Chapo, who only a week prior to this stare-down had been apprehended by authorities. He would eventually be given life plus 30 years and ordered to forfeit $12 billion. That's a lot of goofy-looking shirts. Number 6. Izzy and Yoel give us a fight preview. This one was both funny in the moment for how ridiculous it was, and funnier in hindsight after knowing how the fight went down. Israel Adesanya is well known for his epic stare-downs. The man has a flair for the theatrical, and you just can't help but get caught up in it. The Rock Lee pose against Anderson Silva was particularly awesome, and while his goofy belt exchange with Paulo Costa nearly made the entry for this list, his weigh-in face-off with Yoel Romero is the best. The two had a dance-off earlier in the week, this fight was hyped through the roof, everybody was psyched about this final bit of pre-fight hype before the show. Yoel looked to be in ridiculous shape, Izzy had a Cuban cigar prop he threw down, and then it happened. The stare down. Literally. They just stood there and stared at each other, which isn't unusual, but what is unusual is that it went on for a full minute. It even had phases. There was the pre-stare down stare, the actual stare down, and then when they were separated and supposed to look at the crowd, they just kept staring at each other. Joe Rogan had no idea what to do. Should he jump in? It was kind of like that commercial with Michael Chiesa and Justin Gaethje that came out recently, just with a bit more distance between them. Had nobody interrupted them, would they have just stared at each other for the rest of the evening? What could have possibly possibly broken it up, had not the interviews. Hilariously, the fight itself would be pretty much the same. Five rounds of Izzy and Yoel staring at each other, this time while the crowd booed. Number 5. Rampage Jackson poses with the champ over the years, John Jones has confessed on numerous occasions that the one fighter who truly intimidated him going into their bout for the light heavyweight title at UFC 135 was Rampage Jackson. There was just something about the brawler that really struck fear in the champion, and what's fascinating about that in hindsight is watching their exchanges before the card. I'm in charge. Do you feel in charge? Jones is unusually animated during the actual weigh-in stare-down, rather than his normal stoic self, perhaps a sign that he was a bit less confident than usual. Jackson, of course, is almost always joking around unless he's walking into the cage or actually fighting, and it's the opposing nature of these two that makes this entry so funny. During a press conference prior to the event, the two would share a brief stare-down, and this time Jones was having no part of it. As he oftentimes does, John just stared off at an angle rather than engage his opponent, who was staring directly at him. Not content to allow John to control the moment, Jackson and came up with a brilliant idea, turning his back to Jones and facing the same angle while smiling big at the cameras, as if the two were taking a picture together at Disneyland or something. It was both hilarious and a brilliant move, pointing out the absurdity of both the stare down and John's lack of interest in engaging in it. JBJ's annoyed face while looking over at Rampage being a total goofball is absolutely priceless. This sport did not deserve Quentin Jackson. Number 4. Tony Ferguson Feels the Music El Kakui made our list last time for scaring the shit out of Dana White on several occasions. This time, Ferguson hits our number four spot, leading up to the interim title fight he had with Kevin Lee at UFC 216. What's great about this one is the fact that Tony and Kevin are who they are. Lee was well known at the time for leaning heavily into the trash talk. Who could forget when he even mentioned Michael Chiesa's mom buying tickets to their fight? You won't be talking about my mama, son! And in just about every exchange leading up to the fight, there was quite a bit of chirping back and forth. At the actual weigh-in, though, Ferguson couldn't be bothered. You know when that one song comes on during your workout? mix and you're just vibing like nothing else in the world is going on. That song hit right when Tony Ferguson got off the scales because following a brief flex and show of the abs, Tony danced on over to the stare down and just kept on dancing and singing like he wasn't even facing someone who planned on taking his consciousness the next day, just in his own place, getting down with whatever song was playing in those headphones. What makes Tony's obliviousness all the better is how intense Kevin Lee is in juxtaposition. He's yelling at Ferguson, pushing forward. He does crack a bit for a moment. You can see him smile at the ridiculousness of it all, but he largely stayed in character. As the interviews start, Tony is still dancing, only stopping to answer Joe's question about what he's listening to. Strawberry letter number 23. Go give it a listen. Number 3. Iwan Kutelaba hulks out. 
Am I the only one that thinks that Iwan Kute Laba looks like Jai Courtney if he just lived in the gym? Anyway, Kute Laba is one of those guys who is so intense that it's kind of funny. Like, I get it, this is a cage fight, intensity totally makes sense, but he's just on a level that goes so far beyond the norm, even for a fighter, that it just kind of comes across as silly. Not to say that he's not intimidating, I would certainly not be laughing if Kute Laba was screaming in my face, but as an observer comfortably at home behind locked doors, it's pretty damn funny. His opus was without question though, at the weigh-ins for his bout with Jonathan Wilson at UFC Fight Night 96 when Iwan approached the scale looking noticeably green, as in green everywhere. Once he ripped off his shirt, it was apparent that, yeah, he was painted head to toe. John Anik tried to get the crowd to pop for him taking the ridiculous amount of time that must have been involved in both making this happen and making it unhappen afterwards. One small nitpick, the real Hulk wouldn't need to tear his own shirt. It would tear itself when he turned into the Hulk. Minor detail, though. Kute Laba's opponent came out next, probably entirely baffled by the green man that stood before him. Luckily for Iwan, he would smash, or at least score the unanimous decision victory, so the absurd green skin routine would luckily not become even sillier. Number 2. Russian Escalation I love this clip so much. It encompasses everything that is absurd about this sport, particularly the stare downs. We're headed to Russia. It's 2011. This is M1 Challenge 28. Future UFC veteran Saperbeg Safarov is set to take on future KSW light heavyweight champion Tomas Narcon. Let's just watch this entire way in face off play out, and then we'll break it down. Please enjoy. Okay, first of all, where was Sean Shelby on that one, right, Dana? I kid, but seriously, were they just gonna let that go without anybody maybe being there just in case things got out of hand? And we're in Russia. This is like the home of wild MMA shit. Somebody should have absolutely known better. Anyway, what makes this so hilarious is the strange escalation of things. We square up, I put my fist up, you put yours higher, I give you a little tap, a little flinch, you flinch back, I give you a little slap, you do a little slap back, but now we've apparently reached a critical threshold, which is don't fucking touch me. Now, of course, that's pretty ironic considering the sequence of events, but that's what makes this so funny. I guess Safarov was just looking for a fight here, a reason to blow up, but why I do not know. You're both getting paid to fight tomorrow. Relax. As a matter of fact, they wouldn't get paid to fight. The bout was canceled due to the dust up. Hope it was worth the head slaps. Number one, Henry Cejudo's prop comedy routine. The King of Cringe himself takes the top spot. I could not do another list about these stare downs without including Triple C himself, Henry Cejudo, and given how silly he is and how high profile these fights are, there's just really no way he could be anything but number one. This isn't some guy being a goober on the prelims. This is one of the greatest champions the sport has ever seen, dressing up like the fucking Burger King before one of his biggest fights. It starts with TJ Dillashaw. He kills the stuffed snake, and you can tell TJ is just having none of this. Henry's ridiculous suit is also a nice added touch here. Of course, he's always rocking the gold medals. Next was the best of them, which was against Marlon Moraes before UFC 238. A full-on crown and robe. He throws the Mighty Mouse out of the magic hat, kills the fake snake again. There's a bunny this time. You see Moraes' nickname is Magic. What I really love, besides everything that just happened, is that Moraes cannot keep a straight face. He so badly wants to have a regular stare down, and he just settles for making goofy faces back at Cejudo, who is selling it as serious as he can. It's just fantastic. Henry would one last time go to the well when he fought Dominic Cruz, this time getting pillows made with the faces of his opponents to boot off stage. Even Cruz couldn't help but smile. It was just too absurd. The most ridiculous trio of face-offs any UFC title fight has ever seen, and I seriously doubt they'll ever be topped. And for what it's worth, Triple C won all three fights. So who's laughing now? A big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description, and go give him a follow on his Instagram and Twitter page, at Ben Rosette. All right, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.